Okay, so welcome to this next video on penicillin and beta lactamases. Right, so we've seen now how penicillins work. They work by binding to the active site of peptidoglycan transpeptidase and inhibiting that enzyme. Now what we want to see is uh, we want to have a look at the different types of penicillin because there is not just one drug which is penicillin. Penicillin is an entire family of drugs. There are absolutely loads of them uh, and we want to discuss um, that diversity. Right, so firstly let's see um, the structure that has to underlie all of them, i.e. What do you have to be in order to be called a penicillin? Because there are other drugs which uh, bind to peptidoglycan transpeptidase and inhibit it. So we can't use that as the criterion. Because, for instance, cephalosporins, carbapenems, uh, monobactams, they all bind to this peptidoglycan transpeptidase. And they, too, uh, will uh, permanently inhibit that enzyme. So that is not the criterion for being a penicillin. Instead, uh, the criterion is a chemical structure that you have to have. So let's have a look at this chemical structure then. So basically, the starting point is the beta-lactam ring. So I need to tell you about the beta-lactam ring. Now, the beta-lactam ring is a strange chemical object. It's a four-membered ring, which is structures you don't see often in chemistry. And basically, it has this nitrogen here, um, and it also has... Well, I'm going to draw the skeletal structure because it looks nicer, basically. So instead of actually putting carbons here, I'm just assuming that wherever there is a corner with nothing else, that means put a carbon there. So there's a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here. Again, I won't draw um, hydrogens. Now, this carbon over here is doubly bonded to an oxygen uh, molecule there. Okay, so this, this here is the beta-lactam ring, and that's a characteristic of all beta-lactam antibiotics, of which penicillins are all examples of. So you always have this ring in penicillins, but you have more. This isn't the full structure of penicillin. Instead, you have another ring, a five-membered ring this time, with a sulfur atom in like that. And then, um, again, I'm not going to show carbons, so wherever there's a corner, that means a carbon. And then I will show methyl groups, though. So here is a methyl group coming off here. And you have two methyl groups, like so. OK. And then finally, off this carbon here, you have a carboxyl group. Now, uh, wherever there is, um, there is two little bonds, then that will be because there is a hydrogen bonded there. So for instance, here, this represents a carbon. Now, it's only got three bonds, so there will be a fourth bond, which will be hydrogen. So I'm not drawing hydrogens, just because it makes the structure look more complicated than it needs to be. And that's not the end of the penicillin structure. Instead, you also have an amide bond over here. So you have this amino group, and then a carbonyl group there. So that's an amide link there. And then you have an arbitrary R group here. And this is why penicillins are a huge family of molecule because you can put any old R group you like there. This is the structure of a penicillin. And what R group you put over there is arbitrary. So there are absolutely loads of different penicillins because there are absolutely loads of possibility for R group that you can put over there. So to be called a penicillin, you have to have this structure somewhere. And this four-membered ring here, I want to highlight that because that is the beta-lactam ring. Okay, and um, that's really, really important in how these penicillins actually bind and inhibit uh, the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme. Okay, right. So there's the structure of the general penicillin of a general penicillin. That's it. Um, let's talk about the original penicillin, the one that Alexander Fleming discovered in the 19... Um, somewhere around 1930. So around 1930, uh, Alexander Fleming discovered the first penicillin. Um, so what, what is the first penicillin? Can you, be, can you still be put on the first penicillin? Well, yes, you can. The first penicillin that Alexander Fleming discovered in 1930s is what is now known as penicillin G. And uh, this is the original penicillin. Now, it can't be given orally. 
Instead, it has to be given intravenously. So, unless you were very, very ill, you will probably have never, ever been put on penicillin G. Uh, but it is still a possibility that you can uh, be put on penicillin G. Now, what happened, basically, very, very quickly after we started using penicillin G uh, clinically, and you know, it was revolutionary, it revolutionized surgery and um, it revolutionized clinical care, basically. It was a big turning point in medicine when we had this molecule, penicillin G. Okay, uh, what happened very, very quickly is you started seeing resistance you started seeing bacteria which were resistant to penicillin G. Now, what happened, basically? Well, the thing is, bacteria did not suddenly evolve a... Um, well, they just didn't suddenly come up with a way of resisting penicillin G. We got penicillin G from nature. We got it from a fungus. Um, and this fungus has been using that penicillin G molecule to attack bacteria for years, for millennia potentially. Uh, so, uh, this is not a new story for bacteria. They have been trying to fight this penicillin G for a very, very long time. And basically, nature, when you put a selection pressure like that, nature will eventually select for you uh, a uh, a bacterium which just happens to make an enzyme which will destroy the penicillin. So what happened many a long, long time ago is that some bacterium started making a, uh, well, got a gene, got a mutation in a gene that meant that it could make an enzyme here. Um, so this is an enzyme which destroys penicillin. Okay, so it's going to take in, let's say, this is penicillin here. So this is penicillin G. Originally, we were just using penicillin G. Okay, so in comes penicillin G into this enzyme, and the enzyme is going to break it apart, and it's no longer going to be able to block um, the, um, uh, the transpeptidase enzyme. So this is a beta-lactamase enzyme, uh, which breaks down uh, penicillin. Okay, it's also sometimes called a penicillinase, penicillinase, but beta-lactamase is more commonly used. Pathologists, I think, like the um, name penicillinase. Pharmacologists prefer beta-lactamase. Okay, so um, beta-lactamase enzymes began to... Um, well, but they were already in nature. You see, the problem is that when we started using penicillin G clinically, then we put into um, our population of bacteria, we put, expose a huge, great population of bacteria to penicillin G. Okay, so you've got this huge, great population of bacteria. Now, what will happen is that some of them will have got this gene for beta-lactamase, basically. Some of them will have that gene for beta-lactamase in them because, um, because it's been being selected for, for thousands, well, for millennia, potentially, uh, by this battle between fungi and, um, and, and uh, bacteria, basically. So, some of them will have this beta-lactamase gene in them. And basically, what you will do is you will kill all of the ones that don't have the beta-lactamase enzyme. So, let's say you've killed this one, this one, this one, this one this one, this one, this one. But this one happened to make this beta-lactamase enzyme. So now this one survives, and now basically it's got no competition. So it's going to divide and divide and divide and divide. And then you're going to have a bunch of bacteria, all with this beta-lactamase um, gene in them, and therefore all uh, with the cap capability of resisting penicillin. So very quickly what happens is you get a population of bacteria which are resistant to penicillin. Uh, to penicillin. So you get a population which is resistant. Okay, uh, so uh, that's what a beta-lactamase is, and that's what uh, happened um, with penicillin G. And by the 1940s, uh, Articles were coming out noting the existence of this enzyme, beta-lactamase, which was capable of breaking down penicillin G. 
Okay, so this was a big problem. We needed to do something about this beta lactamase. This was, you know, penicillin was brilliant. It had saved huge numbers of lives, and now we were faced with this crisis that it was going to stop working, basically. So, we need to do something to stop these beta lactamases. And there were two options. Either we could modify the penicillin in order um, to make it resistant to the beta lactamase, or we could um, give penicillin with another drug, we could put in another drug, the aim of which was to inactivate the uh, beta lactamase. So we could give a drug which blocked the beta lactamases, and therefore the penicillin would be able to go in and target the bacterium unaffected by the beta lactamases, which have been inhibited by this other drug. Now, we have made drugs which do this. Uh, a very famous example is clavulonic acid, clavulonic acid, or clavulanate. Uh, so you'll also see that referred to as clavulanate. Okay, um, and this is a molecule which basically will be given alongside penicillins, um, and it w its purpose is to block the beta lactamases and therefore stop the beta lactamases from degrading the penicillin, basically. Okay, so you would give it in conjunction with a penicillin uh, in order to protect the penicillin from the beta lactamases. Okay, so that's an example of a drug which actually um, inhibits the beta lactamases. Uh, so a beta lactamase inhibitor. Uh, I'll just write that here. Now what we'll look at is how you can modify penicillin G in order um, to make it um, more resistant inherently to these beta lactamases, but we'll do that in the next video.